Welcome back to Lockdown Embryology. This lecture is all about the development of the respiratory system. We've already seen how in weeks three and four the trilamina germsis rolls itself up into a series of concentric cylinders with the innermost one being the endoderm tube that is the primitive gut tube. And the respiratory system buds off this gut tube and that starts to happen in week four. First of all, we see this respiratory diverticulum budding off. And to begin with, that's got a very wide opening back into the gut tube. But then we start to get these ridges, as you can see I've shown in that cross section there, tracheoesophageal ridges, so longitudinal ridges, which are starting to close off that connection. Then the respiratory diverticulum starts to branch. It divides into two bronchial buds or lung buds and the tracheoesophageal ridges are going to join together to form a septum. They don't do it completely, otherwise the trachea would be completely divorced from the pharynx, and instead there just remains a very small opening which ends up being the laryngeal orifice. If you think about where the larynx lies in your neck, it lies just in front of the pharynx and it in fact opens into the pharynx as well. What you can also see here is that those bronchial buds have now branched and so now we've got the pattern of the lobar bronchi in each of the lungs. Two on the left and three on the right and they're just going to carry on branching and branching and branching until we end up with the entire bronchial tree inside the lungs. So the lining of the bronchial tree, the respiratory epithelium, all derives from endoderm because that's come from the gut tube and then outside that the muscles and the cartilage are all derived from mesoderm so from the splanchnic layer of mesoderm that was around that gut tube. Now these embryo lungs are growing into a space inside the embryo into that intraembryonic cavity. Another name for it is the pleuropericardio-peritoneal canal, which is rather a mouthful, so you might want to stick with intraembryonic cavity. Now, you might remember that this cavity essentially formed from the clefts that appear at the very edges of the trilaminar germ disc, and those clefts, when the germ disc folds around, become trapped inside the embryo as this cavity, which means the cavity is completely lined with lateral plate mesoderm. There's a layer of somatic or parietal lateral plate mesoderm next to the body wall and then a splanchnic layer all around these viscera that are developing that primitive gut tube and anything that buds off it. So I'm now using the traditional colours to show the endoderm in yellow, that's the gut tube and this developing pair of lungs and then I'm going to switch to orange for mesoderm and we'll see then that this cavity is entirely lined with orange mesoderm. So let's label some of this up then. We've got the trachea up there, we've got a bronchus and that's branching into more bronchi and eventually bronchioles as well. We've got the cavity that the lungs are growing into, that intraembryonic cavity, and that's lined with the orange mesoderm. Now that's going to form epithelium, and we call it mesothelium because it's derived from mesoderm. But an even more familiar term for this particular layer of mesothelium is pleura. So this is the lining of the cavity around the lungs. So that mesothelium is going to form the parietal pleura up against the body wall and the visceral pleura around the lungs themselves. And eventually that's going to be two completely separate pleural sacs, one for each lung. Now I want to look at how this thoracic cavity gets divided in another way, which is to reserve a compartment at the front for the heart and then towards the back for these developing lung buds. So here's a cross section through those developing lung buds and again you can see those in yellow and you can see uh, the orange mesoderm and then I'm also showing the developing heart which we'll look at in more detail in later lectures and the aorta at the back there and then we've got 
pleuroperitoneal folds starting to develop. So these are folds which are growing in a coronal plane, eventually meeting in the midline to form a septum, completely dividing off a pericardial cavity towards the front, the ventral side of the chest, and then pleural cavities towards the back. In an adult, when you look inside a chest cavity, what you see first are the lungs, but that's because they're wrapping around the heart from the back. So finally, I want to focus on what's happening at the very ends of the bronchial tree. The branching carries on and on and on all through weeks 5 to 28 of development in utero through what's called the canalicular phase of lung development until we get the formation of terminal bronchioles and then those terminal bronchioles are going to sprout respiratory bronchioles and at the end of those we have the formation of little sacs called terminal sacs and that terminal sac phase really occupies the last two months of gestation. That's when they start forming. The terminal sacs, the, the little bubbles at the very ends of these respiratory bronchioles are going to eventually form the alveoli of the lung. So this is really the business end of the lung. This is where gas exchange takes place. And in order for gas exchange to take place, there's got to be a very, very thin membrane, of course, between blood and eventually air inside the alveoli. So the cells of those terminal sacs will thin down to become very very thin indeed and then some of those cells, type 2 alveolar cells, also start producing surfactant and this is a really important substance which helps to prevent the alveoli collapsing when you breathe in because that's when you've got negative pressure inside your lungs. The transformation that happens at birth is quite incredible if you think about it. Those lungs have been sitting there filled with fluid up till the moment of birth and then the baby is born, takes its first breath and the air is drawn into the lungs, inflates those alveoli and the lungs expand to fill the pleural cavity. Now filling the lungs with air is one thing, the whole point of doing this is to get oxygen into the blood and carbon dioxide out of it. So the next thing we're going to look at is the origins of the cardiovascular system. The origin of the heart, the origin of blood vessels and the important changes that happen at that moment of birth when the baby takes its first breath with its new lungs. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching. Please like please share and I'll be back soon with the next instalment of Lockdown Embryology.